Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. My name is Luis Portales and today we have a brand new episode of Extraordinary Talks and I'm telling you I am super thrilled about this one because I have a very special guest. I'm talking about the beautiful Ingrid Santa Maria, but you also know her as Sam. Sam is one of the official candidates of Miss Universe Philippines 2021 and she is representing for Paranaque. I'm really excited for you to listen to the conversation that we had about everything going from her family, her advocacy, her expectations about the competition and how she's doing so far. So if you're into that, please stick around for a fun conversation. Now, the only thing that I'm going to ask from you is that if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave a like so that it gets recommended to more people. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. And last but not least, let me know in the comment section, what did you think about all of the subjects that we talked about during our conversation? All right, everyone. So without further ado, I'll see you with Sam right after the intro. Be strong. Be strong. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of Extraordinary Talks. And just like I promised you, here I have the beautiful Ingrid Santa Maria, but you can also call her Sam. How are you doing, Sam? <laughs> Hi, Luis. It's so, so nice to be here. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited for this interview and I'm just so, so thankful to be here. Oh, I'm really the one who is thankful. Thank you for taking some of your time to come here and talk to me and also for putting the effort. I mean, look at you. You look stunning, girl. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I like to look presentable for people like you, Louise. Well, you certainly uh, delivered on that aspect. <laughs> Perfect, Sam. So let's start the interview by talking a little bit about you. So how would you present yourself to someone, let's say, that is not as familiar with you? So I would like to introduce myself as Ingrid Santa Maria. I'm named after my grandmother, so a lot of my friends call me Sam. Okay. I'm 25 years old, and I work as an assistant manager for e-commerce in a local eyewear company. Right now, I'm actually a candidate for Miss Universe Philippines. We made it to the top 75, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Aside from that, I'm, I do fun things. I love doing yoga. I read a book from time to time, and I like to practice some piano too. Those are some amazing hobbies, honestly. Props to you. So Sam, can you tell me a little bit about your pageantry journey? When, when did it all start? Is this your first pageant? This is actually my first pageant. Okay. I, of course, in my own way, I had to come in the grandest way possible yeah. on a national yeah. pageant <laughs> for my first time. I actually, pageantry hasn't always been in my immediate line of um, dreams, I guess. Um, pageantry started for me when one of my Mama's Mama Zico from the camp reached out to me via Instagram DM and he asked me if I wanted to pursue training to possibly become a candidate for Miss Universe Philippines. And when I got that message, I was so, so shocked because I didn't really see myself as a beauty queen. But for somebody to believe in me without even having met me, um, really just made me make that decision. It made me push further. And I said, you know what, let me step out of my comfort zone. Let me do something that other people want to see me doing. And eventually I learned to love that journey. And now I'm here and I'm so excited and I'm ready to face the competition. Absolutely. <laughs> and when you were presented this opportunity, right, to, to join the camp, uh, did you ever hesitate for a moment? Did you take like a few days to like to think about it or was it something on the spot? Well, I, okay, I always said this to myself that when I was, when I turned 25, I want to take all the best pictures of myself because one of my friends told me that when you're 25 years old, that's when you are the prettiest, yeah. your peak, that is the most beautiful you. And um, when they texted me that, I was like, you know what? This is a sign from the universe. How <laughs> could I ever say no? So here I am on this really fun journey. And it's exactly. just everything's new, you know, everything. I haven't been through any of this before. So just every challenge, I get to apply myself differently. And it's just a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, everyone, please take pictures when you're 25. Otherwise, you'll end up like me. <laughs> putting zoom filters over <laughs> but I'm also 25 so I'm just I'm just being dramatic 
So being the daughter of a major sports personality in the country and seeing how pageants are considered almost as a sport uh, in the Philippines, did your dad give you some advice going into the competition? This is actually a funny story. Um, my dad was really hesitant in the start yeah. for to allow me to join this pageant. But as I progressed and as I proved to him that it was something that I wanted to do and something that I wanted to invest my time into, um, one thing he's always taught me was to apply myself in every situation. He always taught me to just be the best that I can be. And if that's something that I want to do, to work hard to get that goal and to achieve that dream. And right now, he's really, really supportive. So I'm so happy about that. But one thing he really taught me really was to, you know, push myself past any boundaries and any expectation. Exactly. Yeah, I do imagine that for him as a dad, it must have been difficult because you want to protect your your child at all costs, right? And putting yourself in a pageant, it's a it's a huge experience, but it's also a lot of pressure. A lot of people looking at you with a magnifying glass, right? So it can be hard, but I'm glad that he's supportive. And at the end of the day, he allowed you to go for something that, that you're passionate about. I mean, you also come from a family of heritage, a uh, lot of, you know, personalities in the family, uh, artists. Was there someone within the family that, that you looked up um, as an inspiration when it comes to pageantry or maybe some of your other projects? I am inspired by all of my family, of course. We're a very, very close family on both sides. And it's really fun to grow up in a big family. But one of the people who really inspired me was my grandmother, Ingrid Santa Maria. Um, I grew up watching her live out her passion. I grew up watching all of her concerts and they weren't always in the grandest of places. Sometimes she would literally bring her piano to a random school or a random convent or just a place that wasn't really exposed to music that much. And as a young child, I watched her bring music into the lives of others because that was her passion. That is her purpose. And it really, really has inspired me all these years and continues to inspire me until this day because doing something out of the goodness of your heart is one thing, but bringing your passion to other people, it's just amazing to watch. And I really hope that one day I can embody that. I feel like that's when you feel like someone is a true artist you know it's not always about the venues or the audience it's just about sharing your art with everyone else so because you're a new candidate right and this is your first national pageant I mean your first pageant overall is there something about you that people don't know based on on first impressions well I would like to describe myself as an extroverted introvert okay what, <laughs> what that means for me is that when people meet me for the first time, they think I'm very, very friendly, very outgoing, very fun. And I am all those things. But sometimes I just like to curl up in bed and read a book and shut the world out and just be quiet. <laughs> sometimes I need to sit with myself and think about what I need to do the next day and think about what my goals are and what my dreams are and what how I can achieve those things. and. So yeah, it's a little bit of a balance of both, but I just consider myself to be exactly that, an extroverted introvert. <laughs> I can definitely relate to that. What's your astrological sign, by the way? I'm a Virgo. I'm a Virgo too. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm very organized. <laughs> yeah, I definitely see where you're coming from. I mean, like I'm out there, you know, like I'm an extrovert and all, but I like my me time as well, you know, so... Talking about the competition, uh, Sam, at a first glance, you have a soft and delicate personality. Do you consider yourself to be a fierce competitor as well? Well, I'm the kind of girl who doesn't back down from any challenges. Ooh. And being here, being in this position to be able to have a chance at that crown just really pushes me to do my best in every single aspect of training. It teaches me that, it shows me that I can achieve something and it's already within my reach and all I have to do to get there is work twice as hard as everybody else because I am new and because this isn't something I have an expertise in but 
I do, I would consider myself as a fierce competitor, just by nature. How would you describe your preparation for uh, the upcoming challenges and the pageant itself? You know, because it's, it's really, really close when you think about it. Well, since I am very new to this, I have been undergoing training for the last few months. And for me, one of the things I really worked super hard on was my passerella, because coming from being an athlete, I was a basketball player in the past. And I had a very stiff body. I had to learn how to move my body in a more feminine yet strong way. And it was a hard balance for me to do that. On top of that, I've been doing a lot of Q&A training. I've been doing a lot of interviews with people like you. I've been, there's so much preparation that I did not know that goes in to being a pageant person, if that makes sense for you. There's so much preparation that I didn't know I needed to do to become this person who can eventually and hopefully wear the crown. Um, I met so many people along the way. I have an amazing glam team. I have the cap, all my mama supporting me in every single aspect of this from personality development to social media to improving every single thing about me. And the nice thing that I think com- that comes out of training for a pageant is that you come out as a sharpened person you know all of your skills are developed and all of these skills can help you beyond the pageant and that's what I'm really thankful for exactly I feel like it's a learning experience you know and what I hope that people watching the interview realize not only about you but also about candidates in a similar position that might be like their first pageant is that you have to really go out of your comfort zone and open up yourself to like so many new things. So, I mean, I just want to give you props for putting so much effort into every single one of the challenges that you've done so far, because you've been doing amazing and you can tell that you're doing it, you're giving it um, the best that you possibly can. So really props to you. Thank you so much, Luis. That really means so, so much to me that someone like you can recognize my efforts. And I just want people to be able to see the real authentic me. You know? Of course, of course, that's the goal. Uh, what would you say as of right now? What is one of your biggest strengths and uh, one of the biggest weaknesses um, that you have to work on? I would always say that one of my biggest strengths is being goal oriented. I see a goal, I set that goal, and my eyes are on nothing else but achieving that goal. And one of my strengths really is just being determined, being driven, being hardworking doing whatever it takes really to get to that goal. And in this case, that goal is the crown. So I'm doing every single thing I can do to achieve that dream. And what about uh, the weakness? And my weakness, passerella. (laughs) (laughs) Really? I've been really, really working on that walk. Um, It's hard for me to express myself, I guess, in that kind of way I haven't I never had a dance background I've always been awkward and lanky and it's also a way of presenting yourself you know so I think that that is a weakness I can definitely improve on and something that I am working toward every day yeah I feel like passarella is one of the biggest challenges because uh, I mean we all know that you're beautiful that like you're like this like you know like top tier girl but Uh, I feel like passarella is a lot of technique and it's also a lot of confidence as well. You know, the most challenging part about it is doing it all while looking like you're having fun and that you're not (laughs) thinking about the steps and that you're not thinking about the technique and the, and the twirls and the transitions. It's hard, but uh, yeah, you're doing great. I mean, just keep focusing (laughs) on that. And it's a good thing when you know that you have to improve on something, it's a good thing that you know it because you can just put the work and the effort and work on that. Right. So. It's only yeah. possible. Okay. So how would you describe your relationship with uh, the other candidates of the camp that are also um, Miss Universe Philippines delegates this year, Victoria and Christelle? Well, I consider Victoria and Christelle as my sisters. They've been my rock throughout this entire journey. And we even have a group chat where we talk to each other every day and we send positive messages and we encourage each other to keep on going, even when we know it's difficult. It's just really so nice that I've found real friends through this journey. And I know these are friends I'm going to keep for the rest of my life. I've seen some of the girls tagging you and you tagging them on posts and stories. And it's such a nice thing to see because it feels like a sisterhood. And um, 
I like to see women supporting one another, you know, already you are in a situation where everyone is judging you, everyone is looking at you, like looking for imperfections and, and flaws, but the fact that you're able to support one another, it's a beautiful thing. So, so inspiring. Have you found already the essence that will set you apart from other candidates? What is it about you, Sam, that makes you so unique? <laughs> I don't think I've had to find that essence. I think coming into this pageant as a new, a newcomer, a new candidate, a new delegate, yeah. um, I've come into this with a fresh mind. I've come into this with a different mindset than all the other girls have. And I've already broken the mold just by coming into this yeah. straight out of left field. And <laughs> it's just, I feel that my essence really is my authenticity. And my genuine intentions to not only win this pageant for myself, but really to be able to help the youth. So like you mentioned, you are new to this world and uh, this entire experience, but obviously this year within the competition, we have some candidates who are considered to be veterans. We have some show-based personalities. How does that make you feel? Do you see it as a challenge or as an opportunity? You know, being side by side with pageant veterans, with people who've been doing this for years and years who've had experience in this industry and are excelling in this industry really just motivates me to become at par with them. It just pushes me to work harder. It pushes me to learn more and to become that person that can be standing next to them on that stage. And I don't really think that it's a threatening environment. I think of it more as an inspiring environment. Yeah. But I always tell the girls, like when I meet like younger or newer candidates, I always tell them, you know, everyone had to start somewhere. So yes, there are a few candidates this year who already have a platform, who are already known and have built a name for themselves, but they also started somewhere, you know, and this is an opportunity for you to show your potential alongside people who are already big within the industry, right? And precisely talking about preparation, what do you think is more important during, especially within the context of uh, Miss Universe Philippines, mental or physical preparation? Hmm. Well, I think that mental and physical preparation come hand in hand. Although you can be physically ready, you can have this whole checklist checked out but at the end of the day if you aren't 100 mentally there it will show in your performance yeah. and i think that taking care of your mental health is a huge part of this journey because there is a lot of pressure coming from a lot of people and people you don't even know who are commenting on things about you um you need to make your mind strong enough to be able to still keep going on this journey and eventually to become a queen Mm -hmm. to become somebody who can wear that crown, to yeah. become somebody of influence. Yeah. You need to have that mental strength because even when you get there, there will be more people who will put pressure on you and there will be more people who will have something to say. And I think that mental strength is very, very, very important. Absolutely. Uh, especially like you were saying, I feel like one of the biggest challenges Obviously, you have like the entire physical preparation, right? But you are already being judged on that. So it's kind of to be expected. Uh, but I feel like what a lot of candidates are not ready for is the, the social pressure that comes with it as well through social media, through expectation, through, you know, uh, putting everything that people hope for, they put it on your shoulder. So that might be very, very heavy to carry. But with the right people around you, with the right team, uh, with the right mindset as well. And I feel like, especially while you are within the competition, having like some sort of like wellness activity as well can help you a lot. Definitely keep that in mind. And I hope that everyone watching us, I mean, not only the audience, but also if other beauty queens are watching us, uh, take those things into consideration. Take it from Sam. <laughs> Have you thought about how to deal with the pressure and public expectation if it ever gets to that point? Well, coming into this, I knew that I would somewhat become a public figure. And even this early on in the journey, there are a lot of expectations. And there is, of course, always going to be that pressure for you to perform, for you to become a better beauty queen, I guess you would say, a better version 
a better to have somebody with better character and better strength um and with that the pressure that comes it comes from all around it comes from family it comes from friends it comes from sometimes even the mamas but all of these people i know the the pressure that comes from them is coming from a place of love it's coming from a place telling me that you can improve on this aspect so you should yeah. and all of those pressures actually aren't really pressure i think those are motivation for me to become the person that i need to be to wear that crown and as for the pressure by the public and you know the trolls yeah. out there um for me to be able to deal with that what <laughs> What I do is I look if the comment has some sort of um, positive meaning behind it. Like maybe somebody sending me a comment saying my styling isn't the best. Then, okay, maybe I'll try to change that styling. But if the comments are just really troll comments and messages from haters and things like that, that kind of pressure just, I sort of just ignore it. You know, yeah. I have a goal. I have plans to get to the goal and I will do exactly that get to my goal by achieving all of those little checks on the checklist exactly you have to put your energy on the right places and you know especially I mean for example me being on YouTube I also get like a lot of troll comments and stuff like that and I have a very confronting personality I'm very nice to people but I'm very confronting if you come for me so sometimes I'm like okay I'm gonna reply to this one and I'm gonna put him in, in his place but then I tell mm -hmm. myself I feel bad of for example wasting my time answering a hate comment when I could be replying to someone who is leaving me like nice comment or uplifting and there are literally 10 times more nice comments than, than the hateful so sometimes it's just a matter of focusing like on the positive and just disregarding the negative because you cannot possibly make everyone happy it's just not possible and can you tell us so can you name maybe one beauty queen that you look up to and and tell us why well somebody I've always looked up to is Megan Young um she besides being a beauty queen and the only um Filipino Miss World I really love her because she shows her real side on social media I think a lot of people are fond of her, especially because of that, because she isn't afraid to be quirky online. She isn't afraid to speak her mind and she's always very positive. And that sends such a nice message to young girls out there that people are multifaceted and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of fun here and there. You're still a respectable person. And I find that that's what makes her beautiful. And that's what makes you relatable as well, because people, of course, everyone knows that you're beautiful, that you are, you know, amazing and all of that. But people also want to relate to you. They don't just want you to be like this beautiful queen on a pedestal that they can just look at, right? They want to laugh with you. They want to know that you also have flaws and insecurities and it's part of it. And talking about being inspirational, let's talk about your advocacy a little bit. Can you see my transitions? How I'm trying to... <laughs> You're so good. Your, uh, your boy's oh, wow. trying right here. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about your advocacy, Sam? Well, my advocacy is really simple. I want youth-led communities to engage in sport and art, not merely as a form of recreation, but truly as a means to see the world in a new way. Okay. So it's through sports and art, and this is mainly for, for the community, right? So how do you implicate yourself within your community, for example? Well, I have been a community youth leader in my local community for the last 10 years. And I love serving that community because it's a community of like-minded individuals. And it's fun because I get to see the growth. Like over the last 10 years, I've seen a lot of people grow into mature adults. And I love the fact that not only do they learn from me, but I learn so, so much from them. And my community has really been my support system since the start, since I was around 15 or 16 years old. And it's really interesting to see them grow with me. And um, if I can add to that, more recently, I've joined as a volunteer for a Girl Scout game. And 
they have this um, advocacy, which is to empower young Filipinas to use sport as a means to get out of poverty. So that's also something that I really, really love. That is something I resonate with. And that the reason, that's the reason why I chose to volunteer with them. I feel like um, community work, especially uh, something that requires like a team effort, like sports, like arts, uh, very often becomes a support system for, for these individuals. And then has like a long, a long-term impact in their lives because uh, you never know what might be the context at home sometimes or what might be like the financial situation. But the fact that you have a group of people who believe in you, who uplift you and who really want to, who really want you to excel in life, it really can make um, a big difference. How would you describe the impact of sports and art uh, in your own life? I've been surrounded by a family of athletes and artists. Um, so for my whole life, sports and arts have impacted me in different ways. Right. I believe that as an athlete myself, not only did I learn life skills, but I developed values. I developed the value of discipline, of hard work, of a competitive spirit, of somebody who never gives up. And all these values I'm able to apply to every situation in life. I am no longer a basketball player, but I still do embody all of these qualities. And I have applied them to my corporate life. I've applied them, of course, in my family life. And now I want to apply these values here in my pageant life. Absolutely. You get some, so much from it, right? You, you learn to be a team player. You get uh, perseverance, uh, resilience, so many things. I mean, and I feel like sports are really important when you think about it. I was not a fan of sports as I was growing up, but the more I get older, I'm like, maybe I should have done it. <laughs> Is it too late? <laughs> maybe it's, it's not too late. too late to start, you yeah. know, <laughs> even just as a hobby. It's something that allows you to build your mindset a different way. And that's what I really love about sports. Would you say that now more than ever during the pandemic, uh, sports and art are important for the youth? Of course, definitely. Right now, we are all spending a lot of time indoors, just as we have for the last year, a year and a half or so. And it sports and arts gives you an avenue to creatively express yourself. Sports yeah. and arts are tools for you to use, especially not just to escape boredom, you know, but more than that, they give you a means for you to have a goal and to get that goal. And for example, let's say yoga. I started yoga during this pandemic and I couldn't even reach my toes, but now I can do a split, I can do a headstand, you know, doing sports and arts, like they give you a goal that you can work toward. And it's something that helps you have more confidence and enrich yourself. And I think that during the pandemic, it is really great because we have all these online resources. We have videos up on YouTube where we can learn to do new things and it's just a whole whole um, spectrum of possibilities out there. Absolutely. I remember uh, especially in the beginning of the pandemic here in Canada um, now the situation is not as bad so there's a lot more access to things but in the beginning anything sports related or out like uh, in the in the outside was really uh, forbidden. Um, so a lot of people were finding ways to stay uh, to stay active, such as maybe like online classes and YouTube videos. I remember even like some fitness gurus going live on Instagram and having like live sessions of uh, workouts. So it's really a way, you know, you have to find a way to adapt yourself and still manage to stay active. Because I imagine right now in the Philippines with everything that's going on, um, how is it for like outdoor activities? Is it permitted or? Right now, currently, as we speak, we are still in enhanced community quarantine, which uh, means that we're not allowed to do anything except for essential travel. So sports and recreational and everything else, they're all put on hold for now. Yeah. But there are so many things you can do online, yeah. which is why yeah. that's what I'm encouraging, you know, just exactly. find something you like doing and just do it. As a youth leader in your community, what is one lesson that uh, you think kids of today need to learn? 
I would say that kids of today need to learn to be open-minded. Um, as I said earlier, I learned so many things from people younger than me, people who I was supposed to be teaching. Um, wisdom and knowledge, you can learn these things from anyone around you. And that shouldn't just be limited to your teacher or your mom and your dad. You can, I want you to be open-minded enough to learn from your friends, to learn from your cousins and to learn from random people online, like watching YouTube videos. Just always open your mind up to all these possibilities and you will become you will become better it will be easier for you to absorb all this information and eventually you can use that information to transform yourself so always be open to learning like we were saying earlier sometimes implication in this type of community programs might have like a long-term impact on people's lives can you share with us some examples about how you have seen how you have witnessed uh, these changes on other people's lives of course the first example that comes to my mind is Heidelin Diaz who she has just it's crazy how much she has done to get to the level that she is now how much hard work how much patience how she even she literally trained with water bottles because she didn't have weights um there are ways to do things, mm -hmm. even if it's not the conventional way. And I've also seen this in my community. There are ways to succeed, even if you don't do things the conventional way. And in my own community, I've seen this through the young people that I've taught. Um, the people who I remember as young 15 year olds, also when I was around 20, who I was teaching what I learned, I've seen them grow into leaders and I've now I see them teaching younger people and showing them what they've learned from me. And that's just the most heartwarming thing for me. Um, seeing people grow, seeing people evolve and seeing people transform. And that's for me, that's the beauty of a community because it's something that you can look back on how far you've gone and you can look forward and see how far the people who you've whose lives you've touched are going and I really love that. Sometimes it's a little more simple to connect with people from your uh, province or from your city because they can relate to the things that you explain, right? Now, if you were given the chance to become the next Miss Universe Philippines, how would you adapt your advocacy to appeal to an international audience to make sure that everyone around the world gets it and they're able to relate to it as well? Well, I think that art and sport are a universal language. And I think that all youth from all over the world can relate to mm -hmm. the use of art and sport and the engagement in art and sport. But for it to be more available, I think that what we can do is just share everything online, yeah. find organiz organizations that have like-minded causes as you do. And for me, that means finding organizations who have access to countries all over the world and spreading awareness of how sport and art can change lives. And hopefully eventually we will be able to reach out to more youth communities and we will be able to mold the minds of the young individuals. Absolutely. That's amazing. That's, that's really a good answer because I feel like when you go to an international pageant, it's really about finding something that like the common aspects of the advocacy because maybe right now you're talking about your community which is you know maybe your locality your city but when you go to a national even to a national uh, stage maybe other people from other provinces or other cities will not get it so you have to adapt it a little bit when you go international it's like a completely different layer of you know, changing the advocacy and making sure that everyone gets it. So for the viewers who have been inspired by you so far, what is the best way to start implicating uh, themselves and contributing to their own uh, communities? I would say the first thing you can do is really to get involved. Mm -hmm. Find a local community, find people who think like you, who share the same values as you, and give yourself to those people. Give your time, give your effort and just volunteer everywhere you can and more than just being involved I think that what is great about this online world is that you can get connected you can connect yourself with organizations all over the world that have the same causes as you and eventually you can be able to help more and more people but really starting right at home is the best way just getting involved with whoever 
whoever's lives you can touch immediately. Oh, I love that. And especially for the people out there who, because sometimes people look for this type of things and maybe there's, there's no organizations that do something similar to what they're interested in. I mean, why not start your own? I know that, I mean, starting your organization seems a little bit ambitious. I'm not going to lie, but there are ways that you can start connecting with people and giving back to the community. And you never know where that might lead you, you know? Sometimes you have to be the change that you want to see in the world, so. I love how you said be the change. I think that is a very, very good message for everybody who wants to be inspired. You can start from within. Yeah, exactly. That's the goal with this type of interviews. I look up to to all of the candidates because honestly, from a pageant perspective, right? Yeah, we look at the pasarela and this and that. But at the end of the day, when you think about it, it's all like a group of exceptional ladies who have like a lot of stories to tell, a lot of things that they can uh, give to the audience and inspire. And I feel like beauty queens are a voice of change at the end of the day. So when I when I bring guests to my podcast, I try to get like all the substance and give it to the viewers. <laughs> you are doing the most, Luis. That oh. is the inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> Before we head to the end of the interview, Sam, I wanted to ask you, uh, I was talking your Instagram, okay? I was like scrolling through the photos, the comments, the captions, everything. And I see that you have lived uh, abroad in America, in Malaysia. Uh, what is it that makes the Philippines so unique? Well, first of all, it's more fun in the Philippines. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think what makes the Philippines more fun really is the people. There's nothing like being surrounded by Filipinos who even who even when they're placed in times of trial and times of really, really, really difficult situations, um, they manage somehow to be happy. And it's funny because you wouldn't expect just random people to say hi to you or to greet you on the street or to even smile at you, even if they don't know you. But for me, being in the Philippines, It shows how the people's happiness brings us together, if that makes sense. Everybody has a positive mindset. Even if they're just eating pancit canton, they're already so, so happy. And just that kind of attitude and that kind of positivity really radiates through the people and to this country. And I think that just being happy in general is one of the best things you can do. From, from the perspective of, of a foreigner, let's say from an outsider, the impression that I get from, from Filipinos is that there is really a sense of community. Doesn't matter what is it that, it might be sports, it might be beauty pageants, it might be music, there is always like this support and it's almost as if you knew that, oh, this is like my, my fellow countrymen, like kind of support it, you know? I've seen this in many, many situations. Right now in the in the Olympics, you know, We've seen like so many successful stories and the entire country celebrating victories. Uh, We have seen this through pageant. For example, last year with Rabia, a lot of people were sending love and trying to uplift her as well. So it's something that I admire um, from the outside once again. And I hope that other countries, including mine, (laughs) can take notes. As I was talking on your Instagram, I also noticed that you visited my country. You went to Cuba. What was your experience in Cuba? (laughs) How was it? Oh my gosh. I loved it. It was like stepping into a moment in time. Yeah. Um, My family and I, one of the things we like to do together is travel. And my cousins and I all, my grandma brought us on that trip. And when we set foot in Cuba, the first thing we wanted to do was ride one of the cars. Yeah. (laughs) They're like vintage cars and um, it's such a cool experience to be able to enter because I know Cuba's been closed for a long time, you know, to be able to enter into that world, that world where everything is at a standstill. And it's just such a beautiful, beautiful place for the short time that I've been there. I've seen so many things that have inspired me, I guess. Like, I love the food. I like the music. I remember we were out at night and like, it was just nice and lively. And Cuba just, it was one of my favorites to visit. Thank you. That really, 
really warms my heart. When I saw that picture, I was like, oh. <laughs> I have to ask her how it was. <laughs> uh, totally have to go again for a longer time next time. Yeah, for sure. I always tell everyone, you know, if you get the chance to go to Cuba, it's the closest experience you will ever had to like travel in time. It will take you back to the 60s, to the 50s and like those decades. <laughs> Sam, this is almost uh, the closing moment of the interview. But before I let you go, <clears throat> I wanted to give you a few moments for you to think. Think right now as if you were talking to an audience of people looking at you. Uh, what do you want them to remember from you? And how can we support you on your journey? I just want everybody to remember that it's never too late to find time to do something that you love. And... Once you find time to do that thing that you love, work hard, put in the effort, get that goal and achieve your dreams. I think that being in this pandemic really has taught me to learn to give myself time, to give myself time to become better, to give my myself time to become stronger. And I think that all of you should really, really learn to give yourself that time and to give yourself the happiness that you deserve. And to everybody out there watching, thank you so, so much for making it to this interview. Thank you for supporting me every step of the way. Thank you to my fan clubs. Um, that's Ingrid Universe on Instagram or Sam underscore Universal. I have a Facebook fan page. Also, Ingrid Universe or Ingrid Santa Maria. And I wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to the camp, to all 14 of my mamas. I have a list because I didn't want to forget anybody. So I wanted to say thank you to um, Mama John Morante, Tito Dude Santiago, Mama Dennis De Vera, Mama Joel Season, Lola Robert Caindoc, Mama Sal De Singo, Mama Zico Manzano, Mama Elmo Burbano, Papa Chris Lumanglas, Lu Papa Neil Delida, Chrisos Gamutan, Papa Juan Tisio, um, Papa Brad Fernandez, and of course, Doc G and Segara Nevera. Um, all of these people at the camp have molded me and have transformed me to become the woman that is sitting in front of you today. And without all of their guidance and all of their support and all of their help, I would not be here. Yeah. Quite literally, um, they have changed my life for the better. And I'm really just so, so grateful to them. I'm also grateful to my glam team, Gillian, Jeff, and Zuela. I'm very grateful for my sisters, Christelle and Victoria. I love you guys so, so much. And of course, to Bella, who has also helped me in this journey. Um, and just for everybody who's new, who's discovering me through this interview, welcome to my life. And I'm excited to go on this journey with the rest of you. On a personal note, I can really tell that you have a strong support system. And I'm really, really happy to see that because you will need it during this competition. And on a personal level, I really wanted to thank you for giving me some of your time, for putting the effort in looking so beautiful and come here and talk to me today. Um, and I already knew that you were a stunning girl, but today I really also feel like you're a brilliant girl as well. Lots of substance. You have a, a fun personality and you have everything that it takes, you know, to succeed within this pageant, but also in life. So I'm wishing you nothing but the best and I'll be rooting for you. Anything that you need, girl, just send me a message. I'm like a few seconds away and uh, yeah, you have earned like a new friend. So, you know, we're here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Luis. That really, really means the world to me. I'm so lucky to be here with you and with everybody else. And I'm excited for what this pageant journey has in store. Just don't forget to have fun. That's like the main <laughs> thing. <laughs> And for everyone watching us right now, I just wanted to say thank you for joining me once again for another episode of Extraordinary Talks. I will see you very, very soon with the other fun interviews and fun projects. So stay tuned for that. And until then, I'll see you the next time. Everyone stay safe and take care of one another. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.